In this video, we're going to complete example two. It says that Ben has been employed by a mobile phone shop and he must choose one of the following two forms of income. Either he can receive $20 per mobile phone that he sells plus a retainer of $300 a week or he can receive $30 per mobile phone sold with no retainer. If you're not sure what a retainer is, for the first instance, if Ben was to sell no mobile phones, meaning he doesn't make any money from mobile phone sales, he still gets the retainer of $300 for the week. Whereas in the second instance, he doesn't get a retainer, but he gets more money per mobile phone he sells. If you're a really good salesman, meaning you, you can sell a lot of mobile phones, then you would be more interested in the second dot point. You'd be interested in getting more money per mobile phone sold. Whereas if you're not very good at selling the mobile phones, then you probably want the first dot point. You probably want the retainer. Now question A says, create two equations that represent each dot point. As we do it, we're going to represent the number of phones sold using the pronumeral N, and we're going to represent the income received using the pronumeral I. So on the left, we'll call this equation one. And this is going to represent the equation for the first dot point. And our second equation, which will be for the second dot point, we'll put that on the right. We'll call that equation two. It does help to have a table of values. Some people can do it without a table of values, but I think we should do it with, with one. And we'll put N at the top and our income below this. So we'll go zero, meaning we sell zero phones. And I think it'll work better if we go up by tens. I think that'll help us more. And we'll do the same thing for both equations. All right, so looking at dot point one, if Ben sells zero mobile phones, meaning he, meaning he doesn't get any money for mobile phones, but he does get a $300 a week retainer, so he'll get $300 for his income in this instance. All right, let's try the second column. He makes $20 per mobile phone sold. If he sells 10 of them, that's $200, plus the $300 makes $500. All right, if he sells 20 phones at $20 per phone, that's $400, plus the retainer of $300 makes an income of $700. The next one's going to be $900, and I know that because I can see a pattern. The numbers are going up by $200 each time. Let's now look at equation two. If he doesn't sell any mobile phones, he's actually going to get $0, because there is no retainer. If Ben sells 10 mobile phones at $30, 10 times 30 is 300, he'll get $300. If he sells 20 phones at $30, that's going to be $600. And we can see that we're going up by 300 each time. The next one's going to be 900. We can see already that when you sell 30 mobile phones, you'll get the same amount of money in each case. Now we need to come up with two equations, starting with equation one, and we're going to use the gradient intercept formula to help us do this. Y equals MX plus B. Now we'll start with the easy part, finding B. B is referred to as the Y intercept. Now, remembering that Y has become I, so technically it's the I intercept this time. And what you do is you look in the column where N equals zero. It's usually X equals zero, but in this instance, it's N that equals zero. And we can see that I is 300. So that's what B is going to be. B is going to be 300. For now, we'll keep X as X and y is y. 
and we'll try and find M. You know, B is 300, but we need to figure out M. Now, M is the gradient, and usually we can find the gradient just by looking at what the numbers are going up by each time. We can see that they're going up by 200 each time. This would work, but only if the numbers at the top are going up by 1, and they're not. They're going up by 10. So if they were going up by 1, let's say we had n, and then we get 0, 1, 2, 3, what would we get for our income? Well, under 0, we know it's 300. If we only sold one phone, that's $20 plus the retainer. That would be $320. And the next one, if we sold two phones, that would be $340. And if we sold three phones, it would be $360. So we can see that this one is going up by 20s. And that is what our gradient is. It's 20. So we'll put that here. You might remember that we need to change the y and the x. And if we look at our table, usually x is in the top row. This time it's n. So we're going to replace the x with the pronumeral n. So it becomes 20n plus 300. And usually y is the bottom row, but this time it's i for income. So we're going to replace the y with an i. And that's our new equation for equation 1. Let's now look at equation 2. We'll follow the same process, starting with the gradient intercept formula, being y equals mx plus b. b is always the easier one to find. It's just the y-intercept. So we look at when n is 0, and we see that i is 0. So b is actually going to be 0, which means I, I don't actually have to write plus 0. I can just cancel it out. But we'll do that later. And we've also got to find m. I'll copy down x and y. Once again, we need to figure out what we're going up by each time. Or sometimes it's down by if we have a negative gradient. And we know that because n is going up by 10s, we can't really use 300 as our gradient. So let's look at what would happen if we were going up by ones each time, what would our income become? We know that if we sell zero phones, we get zero dollars. Each phone is worth thirty dollars in the second dot point. So if I sell one phone, I get thirty dollars. If I sell two, I get sixty. If I sell three, I get ninety. And we can see that this time we're going up by thirty. So M will be 30. Remembering that y becomes i and x becomes n, and we don't need to write the plus 0 down. We've come up with our two equations. Here's equation 1 and here's equation 2. You might have noticed that our retainer was our y-intercept and that the money we get per phone is our gradient. Equation 2 is 30. Our gradient was 30. We had no retainer. We have no y intercept. All right, well, we've got questions B, C, and D to go. And I'm pretty sure we're going to be using these equations throughout. So question B wants us to graph both equations on the same set of axes. So our two equations are, or were, I equals 20n plus 300. That's equation 1. In fact, we'll use a subscript of 1. And then our other equation was I2, or, or the second equation, which equaled 30n. And we're going to graph both of these. And what's really good here is we already did a table of values back at the previous slide. So we can use these to help us. And because we went up by 10s, I think we should do that on our graph as well. So I'm going to put some axes in and we're going to have n as our horizontal axis because this replaced x and i as our vertical axis and we're going to go up by tens 10, 20, 30 
I can see that n gets as high as 100 here. And I've got to think to myself, how high is my income going to go? I reckon the second dot point where it was $30 per mobile phone, if I sold 100 phones, that would go to three grand. And I think that's going to be the highest I'm going to get. What I reckon I'll do is I should go up by 300 each time. All right, that's looking pretty good so far. Now, I just went and grabbed the table of values from the previous slide just to help us do this. We'll label some points. So looking at equation 1, we've got 0, 300, 10, 500, 20, 700, and 30, 900. And what would probably make it a, a lot easier is if I just went, all right, what would happen if I sold 100 phones? Let's add an extra row in here, 100 phones. Well, it's $20 for, per phone, so 20 times 100 is $2,000, plus my retainer makes 2300 We'll write that in. All right, so if I sell 100 phones, I would reach $2,300 up here. Now, if you can get just two points, usually you get the point closest to the left and the one closest to the right. That's, that's really all you need. Because if I connect them with a straight line, they're going to pass through the other points anyway. Let's also label this as equation 1. And we'll do that by just writing I1 like so. And we should put an arrow in because it does go on forever. We're now going to do equation two. It's going to work a lot better if we pick a different color so we can distinguish between them. I'll do it in purple. This one starts at the point zero, zero. We can see that here when n is zero, i is zero, and then it goes 10, 300, and so on. So uh, 10, 300, oops, it's changed color all of a sudden. 10, 300, 20, 600, 3,900. And we mentioned earlier that if we reached 100, meaning we sold 100 phones, that we would receive $3,000. 100 times $30 is $3,000. So this would come up here. Excellent. So we've got our two equations, equation 1 and equation 2. So we'll write I2 on the purple one to distinguish between them. Let's now move on to questions C and D. Question C says, if Ben sells 40 phones on average per week, what payment plan should he choose? Why? So going back to our graph, this is where he sells 40 phones. And if we go up here, you'll see that he gets more money with the purple than he does with the black. Sorry, more money with equation 2 than equation 1. So we'll write down here the second plan. The plan where he gets $30 per mobile phone. Now, why should we choose this plan? Quite simply, because he will get more money. All right, last of all, question D. What does the point of intersection represent? The point of intersection was here where 30 phones were sold and Ben received $900. Now this point of intersection represents the point at which he gets the same amount of money regardless of which plan he chooses. So we'll write that down. Anyway, that concludes our lesson on example two. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.